So Dr. Parker and I did the luminol lab for you. You should be able to follow along, follow all the steps, and uh, make observations and record uh, data that is provided and that you observe uh, in your lab notebook for this lab. Um, enjoy. So the first thing we have to do is weigh out our three nitrophallic acid. So again, weigh boat. We're going to hit the tear button to get rid of that mass, and we're going to weigh out a gram of our material. See how close we can get. Riveting, I'm sure. Not a little over. Let's get a little bit out of there. Tap, tap, tap a root. That's pretty good. So that is our mass of three nitrophallic acid that we're going to be using. All right, so we have our test tube plant. We have our uh, about roughly gram of material we weighed out previously. We've added that. We're going to add our two mLs of 8% aqueous hydrazine. And we're going to gently heat that until uh, that solid dissolves. Let's make fire. So, so we're just going to take the Bunsen burner over it just a little until it gets warm enough that the majority of that solid. Off. It shouldn't take too, too long. Once that's done, I'm going to weigh out a few more ingredients and then add them and we'll come right back to uh, the video. So now we have to add some boiling stones. This uh, will keep the reaction from boiling over. I'm going to drop some boiling stones in there. You'll see them fall in. All right. Then we're going to add our triethylene glycol. Now we need to get a thermometer in here. Uh, we want to make sure that you use a high boiling point thermometer. I don't think this is something in here. We get one that goes up to 260. Right, because we have to heat this up to like 220 degrees. Thermometer clamp. Slide your thermometer down. You want to get as much of the bulb submerged as possible so that you get an accurate temperature, but you want to avoid having it touch the side of the glass. So you're not getting the temperature of the glass, you're actually getting the temperature of the solution. And then we're going to heat this to between 110 and 130 with the goal of driving off the water. And you'll be able to tell that the water is gone is when you're around 100 to 110 degrees, you won't see any more bubbling, right? The triethylene glycol has a really high boiling point. It won't boil at 100 degrees but water boils at 100 degrees. So you can see all this boiling is because there's still water in the solution. And as I heat it, it starts to boil. And you notice I'm heating it a little bit and I'm taking the, the heat away because I don't want it to boil over. So I just want to like maintain it. Right now I'm at 105 degrees. And I want to maintain it there until when I heat it, I don't see that bubbling anymore. And I think you can maybe see, but up the sides, you'll actually see water start to go up in the posit. Maybe the top will be a little bit foggy. And that's because the water is boiling, but the top of the test tube is cold, and so it's condensing back down. Right, still bubbling, so that means there's still water. It's a pretty easy indicator.
So the mixture was cooled to 100 degrees, and then uh, we added 15 ml of uh, water, of hot water, and it uh, kind of changed colors and consistency. And now we're gonna let it cool down to room temperature, and then we're gonna set up a filtration. So we'll be back for that in a second. So we've set up a Buchner uh, filtra uh, vacuum filtration. We have the thick wall tubing, sidearm flask, uh, Buchner funnel with filter paper. And we've got our uh, solid, if I put my finger in the shot, good job. Um, we have our solid and we're just gonna filter that off. Let that dry for a bit and then do the next step. rinse this out a little bit to make sure we get everything but it's not super important because we end up putting it back in that same test tube so we get a little bit of leeway here in this reaction and there we go all right so now we have our hydrated and now we're going to reduce our nitro group to the NH2. Um, so we need five milliliters. I'll just leave a milliliter behind. Uh, but we we'll return our hydrocid to our test tube. Our boiling stones were already in here, so they'll still be in there when we boil. We're going to add our sodium hydroxide. And then, what is this we have here? Sodium hydro uh, hydrogen sulfite. So fine. So three grams of that. Mm -hmm. Do it a little mixed, but as our solution heats and refluxes, that material will make its way down. And now we're going to just heat this to boiling for five minutes and then let it cool back down. Uh, add two mLs of acetic acid and then let it cool to room temperature. I don't think you guys need to watch a pot boil, so we'll cut away. So we heat this at boiling for five minutes and now we have to add two mLs of acetic acid and then we'll let this cool to room temperature. All right, so now we're going to filter our resulting reduced product, which is going to be our luminol. So you see we've got this solid in our solution. That solid is what we hope to collect. So I just wet my filter paper. Since this wasn't an aqueous solution, we're going to use All right, so the luminol has been filtered, and so this is our luminol, and you can see that it's kind of sticky, it's stuck to my spatula, so in the directions it says that it still will be moist, and it is, and because water takes forever to dry, but that's okay. We're gonna dilute it anyways with some aqueous solution, so we've got our luminol that I'm gonna put in here. We've got our two milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So I'll pour that in here. And then we're going to add 18 milliliters of water. Okay. 
That's my grip strength. Our 10. Then I'll add another 8. This will make our stock A. And then we'll go on to make our stock B. So you see that dissolves quite nicely. Just gonna give it a stir, make sure that's all nice and in solution before we divvy this up. So we'll go on to make stock B and we will return. So here are all the flasks number one through four with uh, the stock A added and then the clutchers added. We're gonna turn off the light so you can see this and then we're gonna add our stock B. Right, so here's number one. So this is our control. It has no quencher in it. So I'm going to add, add stock B to A. Give it a little swirl. is dichlorofluorescein. And four has phenolphthalein. 